Hello, I'm Sam from Chess Obsess. The focus of my channel is to share and educate on how to buy less, buy better. It's not necessarily about buying less things, it's about buying something that fits its purpose perfectly and serves you for as long as possible. As we continue to explore outerwear, I wanted to talk about another option that we have for those days that are just supremely average. I find that even on a mild day, I can find myself trying to layer up for the look and ultimately just end up being boiling and sweaty a bit. Clearly iron hot, but so do a lot of my friends. Sadly, we don't seem to be the people that are able to wear a puffer jacket in 20 degree weather. I have no idea how anyone does that. So in this position, I find that I have very few options. I want something that's warm for those cold mornings, but not too warm that if it gets really, really hot, I'm gonna sweat a lot and feel very uncomfortable or too cumbersome that if I want to take it off and put it in a, you know, in a bundle and carry it around, for example, that it's something that's easy to take off and put back on. I want something that's also going to not look like it's from an outdoors shop. I don't want anything too bulky that I couldn't wear with an OCBD or a dress shirt if the need arose. Now, I've always enjoyed the saying that vests are best because of how incredibly versatile they are. They're basically a puffer without the sleeves, right? I realized that the right puff of it would probably fit my needs exactly, but it would need to be the right one. So who did I consider? The title is probably a spoiler that I ended up choosing Private White VC, but who else did I look at and consider before ultimately deciding on this Private White Gillette? The first place that comes to mind was Barber. I'm sure that at some point I've seen an old advert of people wearing the Barber Lowerdale Gillet, which is a quilted gillet that I find particularly nice because of its cut and how it sits. It's quite slim to the body, it's quite form-fitting. It was at this point that I decided that I wanted the vest to be green for two reasons. One being that I really like the Barber green and the color that they use, and I think that I'd find it very easy to wear. And the second reason being that my wife really, really likes the color green, and we can have matching fits if we both have olive green vests. The reason I ultimately decided not to go with Barber is simply because I can't find them here in Australia. Getting it imported was going to be, you know, a bit of a challenge and more difficult than it was ultimately worth. My second choice was immediately to go and look at Uniqlo, who I know sometimes have a gelée in stock, but it can be hard to know what's actually in stock with the seasons and you know, they're very seasonal brands, so it's a bit difficult to know exactly what they had. At the time, which was earlier this year, maybe January, February, they had two options, which one was their Ultra Light, which can still be found today, but I find that one too shiny and too puffy looking. And the other one was a collaboration between Uniqlo and I believe JW Anderson, but I can't find that exact garment or any reference to it. Again, there are seasonal business so things change pretty quickly. The JW Anderson one was the one that I actually wanted. It was quite form-fitting. It sort of had a similar vibe, a similar look. It wasn't too shiny and it wasn't too puffy. It was my second pick but because of the cost being around $80 I was really happy to sort of try out the style to see if the style was for me before investing in a higher quality version of the vest like the one from Private White. Unfortunately I tried both the Uniqlo stores that I can get to easily and neither had stock so I was a bit out of luck on that front. And that's what led us to Private Private White. Yes, it's going to be a bit more expensive, but with my experience with the brand Private White to this point, I was very happy to invest as I can see that it is worth it in the long run. Well, let's talk about the gelée I ended up with and some of the reasons that I ultimately decided that it was the right gelée for me. First of all, I just want to say that the words gelée and vest are synonymous as far as I can tell, but the private white gelée is called a gelée, so I'm going to use the word gelée instead of vest probably throughout the rest of the video. Sadly, there is no super exciting quote from the website, but there is a short sentence that sort of encompasses what this gelée is. It's an innovative insulated gelée, handcrafted in England from the finest reconstituted polycotton. The details are the model is a insulated gelée, the colour is olive, the origins are made in Manchester, which is of course in the UK. The materials are a blend of recycled polyester and cotton, which they call polycotton. The garment itself is insulated with 100% merino wool wadding. The lining of the vest is 100% cotton and the front fastening is of course with these military grade copper studs. On the back there is the two copper rivets and the hanger loop that we love to expect from a private white garment. In terms of the construction, the whole garment is with a quarter inch top stitch detail. All the quilting is two centimeters of vertical tubular quilting. On the outside, you'll find two patch pockets with a slanted entry, an internal zip just here that you can 
quite easily fit a smartphone in, even my big Galaxy S22 Ultra uh, can fit in there. And then down the bottom here, there's another little pocket that you can easily fit the phone in if it doesn't fit in that one. The collar is called a cushioned collar stand and all the fabric is actually south edged and bound. So that's pretty cool. The fit, they say, is a regular, but as we know with private white, they run large. I chose a four, which in this instance is a medium. As I said in my last video, because I'm between a small or a medium, I sort of pick based on how close to my body it is. And because this is meant to be an outer layer, I went with a medium. Finally, the cost, which at full price is 565 Australian dollars. So as I said, I wanted something that looks sleek and sort of elegant. I also intended this to be a layering piece. With private white, because I'm between a small and a medium, depending on what layer it's going to be, I chose, once again, a medium or a four. And I think for me, I chose correctly. Wearing a long sleeve and a t-shirt is probably the typical way that I've worn this gelée. And for me, it fits really, really well in that context. The body length is perfect. It's about the same length as a t-shirt when it's not tucked in. It's about the same length as the rugby that I'm wearing right now, maybe just slightly shorter. It's plenty to cover the back of a sports coat if you wanted to sort of add that as a layer underneath. And it keeps that sports coat nice and dry and warm and also wind resistant, which is fantastic. There's enough room in the chest actually and under the arms for me to move around really, really easily. Even when it's done up, there's you know, tons of space to move around. It's a pretty perfect fit across the back, but there are no pleats, of course. The fit overall is incredibly good. I would call it quite neat. The way the garment is cut and the panels make it fit perfectly in this context. If I did want to wear a sports coat, like I said earlier, or any other sort of thick layers, the fit does become a little bit more restrictive, but predominantly just under the armpit, because there's not really much space there, as you can probably see. But it's definitely doable, and I have done it fairly regularly through the recent winter. As usual, the materials used by Private White are sensational. And actually the reason why I chose this over continuing to search for the Uniqlo option. Specifically the color and the look of the external shell, but also the insulation choice used by Private White. First of all, let's talk about the exterior shell. It's called a polycotton and is a blend of recycled polyester and cotton, though I can't tell you exactly what the makeup of that blend is specifically. The end result is a very matte and sort of water resistant material, though it doesn't claim to be water resistant, I believe that it does repel water at least a little bit in my experience. It does repel the wrinkles though, and it looks pretty much the way it does today and I mean ever since I got it. I really like it because the matte look of the fabric but also because of the color. It's a lovely deep olive color that reflects the light really nicely. I find that it works well to insulate me on a cold day and does a very good job at being wind resistant but it also seems to breathe incredibly well and I believe that that's probably due to the next material that we're going to discuss which is the filling. The gelée is insulated with 100% merino wadding throughout the entire garment. The reason that I like this is because merino is a fantastic material and probably one of my favorite materials in the general sense. It's well known for its ability to breathe, which makes it a fantastic material for those really average days that do get a bit warmer as the day goes on. But it's also merino, so it's very warm and it doesn't need to be thick to achieve that warmth. It's quite lightweight. So it's a nice and lightweight and lovely breathable feeling material. It ticks all those boxes that I have of being breathable but also warm and also being lightweight. If you combine that with the shell material, it means that it can be thrown in a bag, scrunched up and then pulled out whenever needed without needing to be fluffed up or having to sort of you know, worry about massive creases all over it. Like I know we've all seen those shiny ones can get. Of course you have all that, but you also have all the other high quality hallmarks of private white, like the cop rivets on the back that feature on all private white outerwear garments. The snaps are of course military grade copper studs and and the zips are all from Riri Zips. So everything about this garment is incredibly high quality in terms of the raw materials that they've used. The same can be said for the construction. It's incredibly high quality. I'm not really familiar with the construction methods that they've used here, but I wanted to comment on a few things that I really like about the garment. First of all, the two centimeter vertical quilting is a tubular design. It's basically two centimeter vertical strips that go up and down the garment, as you can probably quite clearly see. It makes it a nice and form fitting sort of garment, but it also makes it quite sleek in its appearance, especially when compared to those, you know, thick banded horizontal stripes that you see that really don't provide that outcome. The collar is also really nice. It's very useful when it's cold um, and quite easy to do up and 
do down. There are two deep slanted external pockets, which are nice and comfortable. They feel quite, you know, puffy and warm. And it's quite nice to just rest your hands in if you're a bit cold. There's also, like we said, the zip pocket on the inner chest and a little phone pocket down below, both of which I use very, very regularly. The other things that show the quality are the pattern matching on the back, where they've done their best to align the vertical stitches of those tubular panels with each other panel that's been sewn and sewn together. It's a thing that takes a lot of time and effort, and for a garment like this, most brands probably wouldn't take the time and effort to do it, but it's pretty crazy and amazing to see that Private Wire have done this. Finally, how do I wear it? Well, again, this tends to be a very versatile garment. It's sort of a bit of a trend with my clothes. I often use it over top of my exercise gear, like I do with my WS50 from Informale, but this time on a warmer morning, and often it's my garment of choice for my morning walks with my dogs and my wife. I actually sometimes wear it over top of that WS50, paired with something like a mock neck. It was one of my favorite combinations for those colder months. The WS50 kept me nice and warm and cozy, and then this provided a bit of an external wind buffering layer, which made it super comfortable. I have a photo of this outfit, which will have to suffice because it's way too hot for me to put all that on today. It was, of course, paired fairly often with a rugby shirt, as I have today. It is the perfect combination of comfortable and prepared, and probably the most common way that I've worn it, if I'm being honest. Usually on the bottom, I would wear a pair of jeans or even those olive military pants from Nami Man. They really look cool in the style. I've also worn the gilet over a sports coat, like I mentioned earlier. It was fantastic to add a bit of windproof layer over my wool coat to keep me warm. Really, really comfortable and a really good look that I personally will be using a lot in the future. I think if you were to wear it under a jacket and with the, like a sports coat over top, I think it might be a bit bulky on my particular frame you know, have a bit too much shoulder um, and a bit too much through the chest. But I think if you're a slimmer guy, you probably could pull that layer off as well. This private white insulated gelée is really ideal in all situations because the color is easy to wear. It goes with whites and blues and blacks and browns, and it adds some texture and layers to an outfit that can look quite visually appealing and interesting. Then if it gets too warm during the day, you can either remove a layer, say remove this rugby shirt and just wear a t-shirt and then add the vest back over and just wear the t-shirt and the vest, or I could just remove the vest altogether and stash that away somewhere later for, I don't know, if it got cold again. And then I'm happy to go and get that out again without worrying how it'll look. I can just smack it back on if it gets cold. I may like a vest or a gelée more than the average man, but I think it's for probably quite good reasons. And I think that more men should adopt the style. Though, to be fair, I do see you engineers and consultants out there with your RM Williams, your chinos, your untucked OCBDs and your vests on those cold spring days. Cheers, lads. Thanks for keeping the style alive. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Links are in the description as always, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Cheers.